but we've got some areas that we're watching. A couple of them out there, in fact, mm -hmm. and you got to stay with us. Our top story this morning, as well as what's been going on with the tropics. Two areas you're talking about there, Kendall. One over the portions of the Caribbean, and then 94L just outside of the east of the Leeward Islands. That's right. And so when you think about what's going on, yes, we've got a couple areas of interest, but it is October after all. Mm -hmm. And so this time of year, we do start to see that transition. We really start to see more uh, fall cold fronts swinging right off the east coast, and that helps to keep systems a little further to the south. And so we also have the strong area of high pressure that's protecting the, the U.S. as well. So we've got two kind of components at play here, Craig, that mm -hmm. actually will be beneficial for us uh, back stateside, so the lower 48. Not yeah. saying that we shouldn't let our guard down. I mean, we, we still have several weeks left to go of hurricane season. Right. But at least as of right now, things are looking more optimistic that we should be all right. Yeah, you take a look at both of these, and when we talk about 94L, still disorganized out there, but we'll look at the area for possible development. And areas to watch certainly do include Puerto Rico, uh, Hispaniola as well, the Leeward Islands. All of the yellow you see here is where we could see possible development, about a 20% chance in the next two days. We'll go over what the factors are, but I'll tell you what, the rain will certainly add up for some of these places, as well as the wave energy in the water. So that'll be a concern for them. You watch to see where it goes. We'll break that down in just a moment, because when you look just past here, you're thinking, okay, well, Florida's way out here behind this banner here. Is this going to have an effect on us? But Kendall, you're talking about those cold fronts coming off of the southeastern seaboard, acting as a bit of a barrier for us, which is good news for us. Yeah. Uh, that's just that one. That's mm -hmm. 94L. Yeah, so again, it's kind of the saving grace for us as a system. It generally moves west northwestward over the coming days, and that is going to be bringing heavy rain to locations, especially at places like Puerto Rico and into Española over the next few days. So just get prepared for that. But like you mentioned, Craig, that's not the only area that we are watching because we've got a couple other additional spots where we typically this time of the year have to keep a close, watchful eye on. And one of those is the Caribbean Sea. We also oftentimes talk about the Gulf of Mexico. We've had a lot of storms impact the Gulf so far yeah. this season. Um, Florida, gosh, taking a direct hit three times so far yeah. from landfalling hurricanes. So it's been a tough year. Really, really hope that things stay a little bit quieter. But when you look at our overall ingredients needed for the development of Invest 94L, a dry air. there's some dry air that it's going to continue to have to fight off. And that's a good thing. Correct? Yeah, for sure. Uh, warmer waters, yeah, sure, that's there. But that's also dealing with a little bit of the wind, you know, that's always a big factor for us as well. When you think about the water temperatures out there, Kendall, look at those. We still have temperatures in the mid 80s out here. So mm -hmm. that's perfect fuel. In fact, this is you just need to be 80 degrees or better. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, so it is has a couple of things working for it. But that dry air, of course, can't really help it build anything. So that's working against it as well. But nonetheless, whatever happens, it's the rain. It's the impacts. And that's something that we focus on here at Fox Weather so much is yeah. the impacts. How is this going to affect you? Whether it gets a name, whatever happens with it. And that's going to be the rain for Puerto Rico and portions of uh, Hispaniola. Yeah, Craig, when you think about it, um, looking at the drought monitor for Puerto Rico, there's just a tiny sliver of the island that's just slightly dry. That's mm. about it. The rest of the island dealing with wet, if not very wet, soil moisture. So flooding concerns, landslides, mudslides, what have you, could be an issue over the days ahead. But thankfully, we're not looking at exorbitant amounts of rain. So that's good news. All right. Well, I was mentioning the fact that this time of year, it's actually a good thing because we start to see more in the way of those fall cold fronts. And that really helps to keep things a little bit quieter um, back stateside. But that doesn't mean that, again, we shouldn't be watching areas like Florida. Historically speaking, Florida is one of the states that is impacted the most during the month of October for the lower 48 and then also other locations up the East Coast. We have to think about Hurricane Sandy, which occurred um, right around Halloween. And so it's, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility that we could still see tropical systems develop. But the good news, at least for right now, the time being, is that we are slowly but surely starting to see the overall ingredients trend downward. So things are not quite as favorable, one of which is the sea surface temperatures, Craig. No Mm -hmm. I mean, look, we have had a, a pretty significant Change. drop in our yeah. sea surface temperatures. We've had a lot of systems, like we we're mentioning, that have rolled through the Gulf of mm -hmm. Mexico. Mixed and all up. that well, upwelling, that's helped to actually be beneficial and, and yeah. cool things off a little bit. The cool thing about that is that's looking at the past seven days, right, Kendall? So, yeah, we still have some warmer waters, but it's cooled significantly because of that. You think about upwelling, it's like mixing a bowl of warm water at the top. You've got cool at the bottom, and you kind of mix it all together. Steering mechanisms are huge in this, right? And we've got that high pressure you were talking about, and then one just over just to the north helps to keep that with the clockwise rotation moving 
moving off to the west. Then you've got that front there and all of that moisture that it would bump into you. Front also helps to act as a almost like a squeegee, I guess, if you will, right? Yeah. To kind of keep it away. But the winds, they're pretty strong to the north of there. So Invest 94 may be on the fringe of some a better environment to see some development as it gets closer to Cuba. So we will keep a close watchful eye on Invest 94L as well as the system that's churning in the Western Caribbean Sea. But I think it's also really important, Craig, that we take a step back and think about storms, yeah. historically speaking, during the month of October. Yeah, no kidding. And hurricane season continues, right? The Gulf of Mexico remains a prime spot for tropical activity. Uh, so we talk about what's been going on. These are some uh, videos that we see. Hurricane Milton was just massive, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get back to this because as you take a look at this area to watch here over the Caribbean. Uh, you think about this area, there's a lot of warm water, uh, there's a lot to work with. Where does it go? Does it go into the Gulf of Mexico? Does it go over Central America? That front is acting again as a sweeper, so instead of going over into the Gulf of Mexico, it's a good chance it's going to stay uh, over in the country of Mexico and Central America, which would help to keep the moisture away from us. However, that is going to mean a lot of moisture for them. Mm -hmm. uh, possible landslides, a lot of flooding issues, and you've got a lot of mountain terrain in this part of the world. So, Kendall, that'll be a concern for the flooding because as that front stays there and helps to stall all the moisture that's in place, it doesn't really move very much. So any tropical development, uh, probably not likely to go into the Gulf thanks to that front. It's almost like a football player or something that's just holding up and not letting it go through yeah. that line, if you will. I was about to say, it's a good line. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just saying, huh, I know if you're not going any further, so yeah. not being able to turn northward into the Gulf, that's good news for at least us here in the U.S. And it's but, so close to land. Right. I mean, and when right. you look at that, the odds, 20% chance of development. We know regardless of development, Craig, it's just going to be bringing some heavy rain mm -hmm. to places like Honduras, Belize, um, mm -hmm. just Central America in general For over sure. the coming days. Uh, so it's, it's good to see that the odds are not all that high, right. at least for this system as well as Invest 94L. Mm. And you think about the winds. Look at the pocket that it's working in right now. There is not much in the way of winds. The winds are well to the north and just over to like near Kearsal, the ABC mm -hmm. Islands. But the pocket that it's working in, uh, it, that's favorable for it, if you will. However, it is very, very close to the land. And then when we take a look at what's been going on with the satellite, you can see all of the clusters, not many of them, but to the north there. And a lot of the energy continues to move closer to land. And of course, once it gets over land, has no chance really of developing little to no chance anyhow. And the heavy rain I think is going to be the big story here. Yeah, that's a lot of heavy rain yeah. for folks over the days ahead.